Good morning, everyone. It's wonderful to be with you again today. Welcome to Worship and the Word with us here at Church of the True Vine. I pray that God will bless you as we spend this time together today. Let's begin by reading Psalm 46. God is our refuge and strength, a very present help in trouble. Therefore, we will not fear, even though the earth be removed and though the mountains be carried into the midst of the sea, though its waters roar and be troubled, though the mountains shake with its swelling. There is a river whose streams shall make glad the city of God, the holy place of the tabernacle of the Most High. God is in the midst of her. She shall not be moved. God shall help her just as at the break of dawn. The nations raged. The kingdoms were moved. He uttered his voice. The earth melted. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Come, behold the works of the Lord who has made desolations in the earth. He makes wars cease to the end of the earth. He breaks the bow and cuts the spear in two. He burns the chariot in the fire. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the nations. I will be exalted in the earth. The Lord of hosts is with us. The God of Jacob is our refuge. Isn't it wonderful to know that whatever we go through in life, when we have called on the name of the Lord, he is with us. He is with us. He is our refuge. No matter what is going on, Jesus is true to his promise. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. I am with you always, even to the very end of the age. We're going to be praying together later for people who really need the presence of God in the midst of trouble. We're praying regarding the war in Ukraine and we've just read in that psalm that God is the one who makes wars to cease and we are praying to God that this war in Ukraine will come to an end, that God will bring it to an end. And we're also praying for our brothers and sisters in Indonesia. Indonesia is a nation where Christians are persecuted for their faith. And I'm just going to read to you as I usually do from the World Watch List booklet, what it has to say about Indonesia. The persecution of Christians in Indonesia has worsened considerably. There were three attacks by Islamic extremists on Christians within six months between 2020 and 2021, killing eight believers. Churches that engage in evangelism are especially at risk. Indonesian society has taken on a more conservative Islamic character, putting added pressure on Christians. Many converts from Islam experience pressure from their families to return to Islam. So please join with us later on this morning as we pray for our brothers and sisters in Indonesia and regarding the situation in Ukraine. But our God is a great God. He is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be thanked. And we have a wonderful song of thankfulness this morning, the great old Keith Green number. There is a Redeemer, Jesus, God's own Son. God bless you as we worship the Lord together today.
reading today from Mark's Gospel, beginning at verse 1 through to verse 15. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come out of the boat, immediately there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains, because he had often been bound with shackles and chains, and the chains had been pulled apart by him, and the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could anyone tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you? Jesus, Son of the Most High God, I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. Then he asked him, What is your name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. Also he begged him earnestly that he would not send them out of the country. Now a large herd of swine was feeding there on the mountains. So all the demons begged him, saying, Send us to the swine, that we may enter them. And at once Jesus gave them permission. Then the unclean spirits went out and entered the swine. There were about two thousand. And the herd ran violently down the steep place into the sea and drowned in the sea. So those who fed the swine fled, and they told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what it was that had happened. Then they came to Jesus and saw the one who had been demon-possessed and had the legion sitting and clothed and in his right mind, and they were afraid. This is such a wonderful account here in Mark's Gospel. We see the authority of Jesus Christ even over a legion of demons. In a legion there were thousands of troops in a Roman legion. So we are talking a huge number of demons that had possessed this man. But I'm not going to be concentrating on that so much today because actually to really understand what is going on here you have to Go back to the previous chapter as well. You know, sometimes chapter headings in our Bible can be very helpful to, to help us find things, to look things up, to find the reference. But sometimes the chapter heading comes in the middle of something. And here is an occasion where actually the chapter heading comes in the middle. Let's just go back to Mark chapter 4 and verse 35, where it says, On the same day, 
when evening had come, he said to them, let us cross over to the other side. That is actually where this account begins. And after Jesus has said, let us cross over to the other side, we see Jesus falls asleep in the stern of the boat and a great wind comes up, a great storm rises up. That is so terrible, so terrifying that even the fishermen who were on board the boat don't know how to handle it. Everybody on board is terrified for their lives and they wake Jesus up. They say, Master, don't you care if we're perishing? And Jesus stands up and he calms the storm and the wind dies down and the sea becomes calm. Remember, all of this began with Jesus saying, let us go to the other side. Let us cross over to the other side. The whole reason that Jesus said, let us cross over to the other side was because he was going to where this poor man was afflicted by this legion of demons. It wasn't by chance that Jesus got to the other side and there was this man. Remember, in John chapter 5 and verse 19, Jesus said this, The Son can do nothing of himself, but what he sees the Father do. For whatever he does, the Son also does in like manner. One translation puts it, the Son only does what he sees the Father doing. In other words, this is God the Father who has said to Jesus, you need to go to the other side of the lake. There is a man there who is possessed by demons. None of this came as a surprise to Jesus. Jesus knew full well that when he got to the other side, he would have to minister deliverance to this poor man. But you know what? That storm didn't come as a surprise to Jesus either. It came as a surprise to the disciples, but it would not have come as a surprise to Jesus. It did not come as a surprise to the Father. And I simply want to say this to you today. Nothing that is going on in your life, no matter how severe, no matter how dangerous, no matter how awful, has come as a surprise to God the Father or to Jesus, or to the Holy Spirit. He knows exactly what you're going through. But the whole point is that you are going to get to the other side. And this man, this demon-possessed man, has been crying out. It tells us here that there was a man who had been crying out night and day in the mountains and in the tombs, crying out and cutting himself with stones. He's been crying out. He's been crying out. He's been crying out. He's been crying out. Let me tell you something. God heard that man's cry. If you are crying out to God, I want to give you reassurance today. God hears your cry. God hears your cry. Don't stop crying out. Keep calling on God because he hears your cry. And the moment he hears your cry, he sets things in motion so that your need can be met. If you need deliverance, he will bring you deliverance. If you need protection, he will bring you protection. Whatever it is you need, if you need healing, he will bring you healing. He hears your cry. Don't give up calling out to God because your redemption draws near. This man, this demon possessed man was calling out to God, crying out, crying out, crying out, crying out. And so the father says to Jesus, go to the other side of the lake. Go to the other side of the lake. You know what? That storm didn't come as a surprise to the father. The father knew that Jesus was going to be on that boat in the storm. And yet he still sent Jesus Jesus knew that that storm was going to be coming and he was still able to sleep through it. But he had said, we're going to the other side. Let me tell you something. When you call upon God, there is no power on this earth. There is no power in hell. There is no power in the whole of creation that will stop God getting to you. The devil threw up that storm to try and swamp the boat. But... That that storm was not going to stop Jesus getting to that man who was crying out. 
The storm was not going to stop him. No matter what the danger, no matter how perilous it might have been, nothing was going to stop Jesus getting to that man. Let me tell you something. There is nothing in heaven or on earth or under the earth that will stop God from hearing your cry and responding to your cry and sending deliverance to you, whatever the situation is that you are facing. There is nothing that will stop God from sending rescue your way. If you turn to Romans chapter 8 and verse 32, it tells us this. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. How shall he not with him also freely give us all things? There's nothing that will prevent God from getting deliverance to you. And when you need it, when you call out to him. Of course, the greatest deliverance of all is the deliverance from sin. You know, God knew what it was going to cost for us to be set free from the power of sin. God knew full well what was going to be involved. Jesus came willingly knowing what he would have to face, what it would cost him. Jesus left behind the glory of heaven, was born in earthly terms illegitimately to a family who were poor had to flee with his parents as a refugee less than two years old then he grew up and he began his ministry and he faced opposition he faced opposition from the religious leaders knowing that as he confronted them that envy would rise in their hearts and they would seek to have him put to death Jesus knew that he was going to be betrayed. Jesus knew that he was going to be denied. Jesus knew that he was going to be mocked. Jesus knew that he was going to have men spit in his face. Jesus knew that he was going to have men pull the beard from his face. Jesus knew that he was going to be beaten with rods and with fists. Jesus knew he was going to be mocked by the Roman soldiers. Jesus knew that he was going to be scourged with a cat and nine tails and have the flesh ripped off his body. Jesus knew that he was going to have the crown of thorns rammed down onto his head splitting his scalp wide open Jesus knew that in that weakened state he was going to be forced to carry a cross all the way to Golgotha where Jesus knew full well that they were going to crucify him nothing turned him back listen God will stop at nothing to rescue you. God stopped at nothing to rescue you from sin. God stopped at nothing. Jesus stopped at nothing. Jesus had the opportunity. He said to the disciples, don't you realize I could call on the father and he would immediately send 12 legions. 12 legions of angels and they would come and rescue me. Listen, 12 legions of angels that would have wiped out humankind in order to rescue Jesus. Had Jesus called on the father to do that. But Jesus saw it through to the end. There was nothing, nothing in heaven, nothing on earth, nothing under the earth that could stop the rescue plan of God. If God was not willing to withhold his son, if God did not spare his own son, then there is nothing that God will withhold from you if you call upon his name, if you cry out to him. My friend, my brother, my sister, whatever you are facing today, call on the Lord. Call on the Lord. The same Lord who rescued his people Israel from the land of Egypt when he heard their groaning because of their oppressors. He sent Moses to bring the people of Israel out. When God heard this demoniac crying out as he cut himself with stones among the tombs, he sent his son Jesus, even through the storm, so that this man, this one man could be set free completely from the power of the devil. There is nothing that can stop God reaching you and giving you the help, the support, the deliverance, everything you need. 
if you will simply cry out to him. Some of you may feel you've been crying out for a long time. I understand that. But don't stop crying out. Keep calling on the name of the Lord because the moment you began crying out to him, God was putting a plan in place. God was putting a rescue plan in place. Your deliverance is on the way. Your rescue is on the way. God is on the case and there is nothing that can stop him getting to you and giving you the rescue that you need. Above all, if you are a sinner and you recognize you're a sinner, you recognize that you're lost in sin and you cannot save yourself. There is one who you can call upon. His name is Jesus, the one who went to the cross for you. There was nothing that was going to stop Jesus going to the cross because it was at the cross that Jesus knew your rescue was being achieved. And in exchange for your sin, in exchange for your rebellion against God, Jesus offers you the gift of everlasting life. He's already paid the penalty. He's already paid the debt of sin. But he's saying, do you want me to make you like me? Do you want me to make you righteous like me? Because it's there if you want it. But you have to leave that sin behind and come follow me. The rescue has been achieved. But you've got to reach out now and take hold of it. If you were drowning in a lake and somebody threw you a, 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 a lifeline, they threw you one of the, the rings that you find by lakesides, you know, the ones I mean, the red and white ones. If they threw you that, they would be throwing out a lifeline. Rescue would have come to you. But you have to take hold of it in order to actually receive that salvation that is being offered. My friend, if that's you, reach out, take hold of the salvation that Jesus offers. Receive the gift of everlasting life. There is nothing in heaven or on earth or under the earth that could stop Jesus paying that price for you. All you have to do is reach out and thankfully Take hold and allow Jesus to rescue you today. Let's pray together. Lord God, we thank you that you are a God with whom all things are possible. Nothing is too difficult for you. And we thank you, Lord, that you have made a way for us to approach you through the blood of Jesus Christ. And so we come with boldness and with access today, knowing that you hear us. Father, you are the one who makes wars to cease to all the ends of the earth. And we call upon you today regarding this war in Ukraine. Father, we pray that you will do as you have declared in your word. You will bring this war to an end. You will make this war to cease. Lord, we pray that innocent lives would be spared, that lives would be spared. Lord, we pray that there would be a, a peace that is properly brokered. But Lord, we pray that righteousness will prevail. Where there have been things that are against you, against your word, against your way, Lord, we pray that you would intervene that you would bring this war to an end. Father, we pray too for everybody whose lives have been wrecked by this war, those who have been displaced, those who have had to flee to other countries. Lord, we pray that they would know your presence with them. Pray that you would help them to rebuild their lives. We pray for the families of soldiers who have been killed on both sides Lord, we pray that they would know your comfort and I pray that they would be able to forgive. Lord, we pray that this would not lead to lasting recriminations and hatred, but that there could be peace and forgiveness and rebuilding. Lord, we thank you. You are the one who comforts. You are a father to the fatherless and a husband to the widow. 
So Lord, we ask you to help all those who have lost loved ones. And Father, we pray too for our brothers and sisters in Indonesia. Lord, we thank you that you are with them. That Jesus, you have not abandoned them. You are with them even to the very end of the age. I pray, Lord, that you would strengthen them in their faith. That you would enable our brothers and sisters in Indonesia to stay true to Jesus Christ. I pray that you would give them wisdom to know how to deal with situations. I pray, Lord, that you would continue to give them boldness in evangelism. And I thank you, Lord, for their boldness in witness. Strengthen them in their evangelism. Strengthen them in their witness, I pray, Lord, that they would win many souls to Christ. Lord, we pray that you would reduce the influence of, of Islamic extremists in that nation. And Lord, we pray that you would help my brothers and sisters. Lord, pray that you would keep them safe from prying eyes, safe from attacks. And we just thank you, Lord, that you are with them. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Well, God bless you. Thank you for being with us today. We've really enjoyed being with you. We're back again on YouTube at the same time next week. That's 10 a.m. UK time. If you want to know more about what it is to be a Christian, what it is to follow Christ, then please just get in touch. The contact details will be in the information uh, attached to this broadcast and they're also on the screen in just a few moments. But maybe you want to do something about it right now. Maybe right now you are thinking, I need to know Jesus, but I don't know how to go about this. Well, I'm here to help. If you believe in your heart that God has raised Jesus from the dead, and if you will confess with your mouth that Jesus Christ is Lord, then you will be saved. That is the promise of God's word. So if you truly believe that God has raised Jesus from the dead, you're partway there. But then there's something you need to do, and that is to acknowledge before God that you are a sinner. Acknowledge that you cannot save yourself. Acknowledge that Jesus is the only one who can save you, the only one who died for you, the only one who is risen from the dead and who is able to save all those who call upon his name. And surrender your life to him turn away from the old life what the bible calls repent repent doesn't mean to be dragging around in sackcloth and ashes and crawling through broken glass and being miserable repent simply means to turn to change your mind to turn away from sin and to choose to follow jesus if you are willing to do that now then jesus will save you i'm going to pray a short prayer and if you want to follow jesus then pray this prayer with me. It's not um, something you just repeat parrot fashion. You have to mean this. But if you mean it, God will hear this prayer and God will save you today through his son, Jesus Christ. So Heavenly Father, I acknowledge today that I am a sinner. I have sinned against you, against my fellow men, against those I love, against those I don't even know. Lord, I'm sorry for my sin. I know I'm a sinner. I know I cannot change myself. I need help. I need a saviour. Jesus, I believe that you are the Son of God who came, lived a perfect life, and then died on the cross in my place, taking the punishment for my sin. I believe that you are risen from the dead and that you live today and you save all those who call upon your name. Jesus, today I'm calling upon your name. I need a saviour. I need you to save me. Please, Jesus, would you save me? I choose today to turn away from my old life of sin 
and I choose as best as I can to follow you with all my heart, my mind, my soul, my strength. I ask you to help me in that, to fill me with your Holy Spirit, to enable me to live life as a follower of Jesus Christ. I surrender everything I am to you and I ask you, Jesus, to be my Lord. Thank you that you hear my prayer. Thank you for saving me, for washing me clean. Thank you for making me a true child of God. I am yours, Jesus. You are my Lord. Amen. Amen. If you've prayed that prayer and really meant it, then there's just something else I'd love it if you would do. And that is to get in touch with us and let us know that you have surrendered your life to Jesus Christ. We will pray with you, pray for you and help you in whatever way we can. If you're in Clevedon or near Clevedon, we meet at the community centre on Prince's Road at 10.30 every Sunday morning. So we're back again this time next week here on YouTube, 10 a.m. Or of course, don't forget, you can watch on demand later on. So until next week, may God bless you and may God keep you. May God make his face to shine upon you. May the Lord give you peace, comfort, joy and blessing in all things. God bless you. Bye-bye.